tonight we have here with us uh, senior librarian uh, Makiswari. She will share with us on some of the earliest printed map in the National Library's rare map uh, collection. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Makiswari. What's interesting about these um, maps are the fact that um, they are all printed maps. Okay, so far now we don't have any manuscripts uh, copies. And uh, they actually show the European mapping of Southeast Asia itself. Okay, and also it shows the early cartography of the Southeast Asian region. And as I said earlier, we do have early references to Singapore and the Malay Peninsula. And Singapore, you will find interestingly, although it's not mapped out as an island in those days, it will be just a word or sometimes it could be part of a town on the uh, Johor, or sometimes it's depicted as a waterway, a street. Before I move on, I just wanted to show you some of the um, names that uh, these early maps depicted Singapore as. You can see uh, it's at CD Simkapula, which is a cape. You have the recognizable Singapura. <coughs> you have the very interesting name called Chinkatola. Um, I'm not sure why. Um, and you have the other name, which is Sain Kapoor, but you can see that it's added with Jatana. And the other name that is not recognizable is the Bargin Gapura. This is um, Wu Pei Chu, uh, compiled by uh, Mao Yuan Yi Jie. The Wu Pei Chu is actually uh, what you call um, a Chinese military uh, tactics book. Within this uh, Wu Pei Chu, in chapter 240, you actually have charts of Admiral Cheng He's travels to the Southeast Asia region. So it actually shows how they are traveling from the Sunda Strait down to Malacca down. Okay, Malacca will be here, Sunda Strait, and then Long Yaman here, which is referring to the two outcrops at the Keppel Harbor. Rodricus by Francisco um, Rodricus. He was actually a contemporary of um, Albuquerque, who captured uh, Malacca in uh, 1511. And um, he, he came here around uh, 15, 1512 or so. He was accompanying the Portuguese on their way to the, um, to the Moluccas Islands because they were trying to find a route to the Moluccas Islands, the Spice Islands, where the spices were. And as he was, um, he actually made use of, it seems, local charts that are no longer available. And he also had contact with local pilots. I mean the uh, local boogies, sailors, or, or whoever was here locally. And from them, he drew the knowledge of the region. Okay? So you have almost a discernible, this is in 1512, around there. It was, the book was published in 1515. And you have a most discernible um, Malay Peninsula here, and with the name Samgapura at the end. This is almost similar, but not really um, Singapore yet. But you notice one unique thing, because the locals actually uh, called the island Tamasic. You know, it was known to be Tamasic, but none of the um, European printed maps have the word Tamasic anywhere in them. Even Rodriguez, who was actually you know, looking at local charts, who was um, um, in contact with the local pilots, he did not put it down as, as Tamasic, which is quite um, interesting. One question I have after listening to your talk would be, why is Tamasic used for the locals while Singapore is generally more used by the Europeans? It's possibly they either they didn't give importance or significance to it, especially in the um, Arabic text, the Ibn Majid's uh, text you saw, Haviyat, is actually a poem, but he mentions a Singapur or Singapur, you know. So even they don't mention uh, Tamasic. So one of the reasons could be the Europeans uh, did not really come up with the idea themselves. They must have looked at texts before them, and they did depend heavily on Arabic navigators' sailing directions even before they came to this part of the world, because the Arabs were already trade, trading with the Southeast Asians and Chinese, even before the Europeans came. Mm -hmm. 